an advisory before we kick off this rather long overdue discussion. I am a Supra guy. Why? Because I own a Supra. I loved my Supra. I had many Supra friends. We were HKS kind of guys. So with that, we move into the present of the Supra. We don't have the heritage and the, the backstory on the Supra, but, yeah. but the car guys know it. And we've heard about, sometimes endlessly about it, even from a lot of the guys in the UK. I mean, they, they were obsessed with their Supras. Um, so I don't know what it's supposed to be like. You definitely get a little squat in the ass end as you push harder into some of these turns, which admittedly you do notice the same thing in a Z4 M40i. Like we pushed very aggressively on the track in Spartanburg. It's given the car character. You know, it's a little crazy. It it, it pops and snorts like you expect. Okay, the this is Toyota where you and I are going to disagree. Uh, I don't think that car has any character. No, I think a Z4 M40i has character. I loved Z4. driving the Z4 more because I drove them back to back yeah. for that reason. Uh, so I, I genuinely thought that that was the the. If I had to buy one, I would buy the Z4. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with the Supra. Now we're a bit deeper into Angeli's crest. Let's go into sport mode here. Push aggressively, understand the steering. And I will say it's blessed with the same goodness that came from the Z4. But why is that? Uh, unlike other newer cars, there is some steering feel that's here. You don't get that in everything nowadays as we've moved over to E-Pass. Here, I would argue BMW specifically has done a good job dialing in some feel, and here it's made its jump to the Toyota. Toyota's kind of had a little fun with the Supra and given yeah. it that slightly more... Um, it's not unrefined. I don't know how to put this, but you know, I think the buyer is so different. No, it's not unrefined. I think they've done the a only nice part job of the story it. that doesn't add up is why it's so expensive. Because then it shouldn't be so close to the Z4 in price. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's contestant. Not what you're thinking, but something very closely related because this is indeed a very special round of our game. Uh, the 2020 GR Toyota Supra or Supra GR, let's just agree to call it a Supra, shall we? For a base price of $53,990. Now that is somewhat of a misnomer because the car we are driving is not a base Supra, it's a premium, which means it has a couple of more things fitted as standard, namely uh, red brake calipers, a Qi wireless charger, a better stereo, and a bigger screen. That's $4,000 additional to the base base Supra, which is $49,990. To that, we add only one factory option, which believe it or not, this car has something similar, a driver's assistance package. Uh, that's the blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert, uh, radar cruise control, nannies like that, $1,195. Then the Toyota that we're driving has a couple of accessories, which I would argue they focus on the longevity of a Toyota. Uh, like for example, it's got the clear bra on the front. On the bumper, it's $485. Then there's another clear bra for the hood and the mirror housings, and that is $395. Then uh, there was something that really speaks to the OCD guy in me. There's a cargo mat, embroidered Supra and everything. Looked really cool, but then I realized it's not standard on an over $50,000 Toyota. It's an additional $80. To that, we add a destination and handling of $995 for a total retail price of $57,100. Now, two huge points of comparison. Number one, in reality, there are three Supras on offer. There's a launch edition. That's an additional $2,000 above this 57.1 we just had. And then number two, the obvious comparison, which is this car here. It's donor car. Now, this is where the Supra starts to look really good because you can't compare the Supra with the S30 version of the Z4 because that's a four cylinder. Supra only is on offer, at least currently, in a six cylinder, which this car is. But the base price of this, $63,700. The way this one sits, which has that driver's assistance package as well as some other stuff, namely this very cool frozen gray paint, $73,295.
Uh, so there, your German Toyota starts to look like a bargain. Back on the freeway, let's understand the transmission. And remember, BMW has been doing these eight speeds uh, with great success, I would argue. Remember, these are torque converter transmissions. They kind of went away from the DCTs. So let's downshift here a little bit. Uh, it will not let me stay in third. Okay, here we go. Wow, the backfire does sound pretty good. And there we go, four. Oh, wow, that actually... See, here's the thing. Uh, with DCTs for a performance car, I feel they work. The, 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 the character is better suited to a performance car. Even though they're imperfect, the shifts are more noticeable. Usually when you're going to a torque converter in this kind of equation of a car, something is muted. And, and I, you see this in like Mercedes automatics. It's kind of muted until you get to that DCT and the AMGs. Uh, here, I don't know what BMW is doing, and it, it probably has something to do with the tuning of the transmission. Because so I was talking to Kumo about this, and he was saying that it was this current Gen M5 where we first noticed this significant change in the torque converter automatics from BMW. And now, it, it clearly, that learning has cascaded down from a, what, $100,000 car to, in this case, a $50,000 car. I would argue the no manual thing is a huge problem. Yeah. But that I agree on many cars, so, yeah. which is what made the 718 so much fun. I would agree. I think if they had <coughs> done, now I'm going to go a different, t a different direction with you on this. If they had done an S30 version of the Supra with a manual transmission mm. and priced it at 30 grand, 35 grand. Which is why I was talking about pricing. I'd I mean, be like. That, yeah, that would have been terrific. Great. And that would have been a true um, win of such a partnership. The fact that you had gone and done this partnership for reasons yeah. of economy, of scale. Yeah would have come through better if Absolutely. you actually had a car that was yeah. really approachable, looked like that. Yep. People, yeah, I mean, there would have been a huge cult following, I think. Tactile feel really ain't bad in this thing. It's clearly a BMW more than a Toyota, but there are some bits that just kind of stand out. Like this, the steering wheel is, is a horrible design. And this, this was what? Airbags from like 1990. They're not this big anymore. Even that Hyundai Venue we just drove had a more slim line airbag. And then why is black the only interior color on offer? It's just, it's tight in here, which ain't a problem, but man, it's claustrophobic. Like maybe give me a glass roof, open it up, or change the color. I, you did an okay job on the interior. At least dress it up a bit. It doesn't cost a lot of money to change the colors. It actually doesn't cost anything. I remember a famous line from Hot Wheels chief designer, Felix Holst. Design, good design, does not cost extra money. Let's put some good design here, not just change the gauges. Think of that as like an open letter to Toyota. I loved it. So, wow. because it was, you know, I mean, so when you get into the car, you start driving it. Um, even if you don't know, and, and you'd have to be literally living without connectivity, Wi-Fi in a cave not to know that BMW has something to do with that car. BMW built that car? Something like that. Uh, but you know straight away when you drive it for the first five minutes that it's come out of Bavaria because mm. there is a certain BMW-ness about it. Absolutely. Uh, but they've kind of held back on giving it all the goodies that, that the Z4 has. Z4. So you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I would like to Ouch. point out, hold on a minute. My comment there Oh, is, I'm sorry. You've actually I spent... Do, yeah, okay, yeah, I take lived, that back. I've lived in two other countries I and, take as, that and back. I speak German. Yeah, I take that And back. everybody's like, stop talking like a German. You're not German. I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> I lived in Germany. So they give me so much crap. You're not German. Stop saying Zed. So now so, I do it just to annoy them. Okay, so the, the BMW. <laughs> the uh, BMW. Yeah. BMW. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Z4. Yeah. So I think they've, they've, they've kept some of the goodies for themselves in terms of every, every parameter that you can think of, including... Uh, the latest iDrive, which you know the Z4 has, you can tell from the Supra with its amber oh, edges yeah. and the amber light on the on the climate control that it's the previous generation BMW. I'm trying to be open-minded here, man, because because I'm a Supra guy and I like there's a Supra back, but this was not the way to do it. If you put so much work in the design on the exterior of the car, which I actually like the exterior design, I know a lot of people don't, especially the front end. I am a fan of the exterior. But why not do some work on the interior? I get it's cost cutting, but here's the problem. Like here is the issue that I am having with the Supra. If you and I had driven this thing in like what, April, May, even June, 
I think I would have been really excited about this. Like, the Supra's back, man. And, you know, I get it. The, the realities of the economics of, of the car world, you can't do a program like this where you're not going to sell a, a lot of them in volume. So, okay, I get it. You go get a partner. But then, July. Clearly, General Motors, there's no way I could have put this, has crapped on Toyota's doorstep and said, you know what? That is a lie. You can do a moonshot of a car, and we can put it out at X price, and we can do something that people want to drive. And let's be honest here, this thing is, and I know I'm getting way off into a tangent, really, what's a world car video. This thing is in the 50s. So, it, so it's like a, a decontented Z4. In the Z4 episode, I don't know if you've seen it yet, the M40i, it was, it's a 70, almost $75,000 car. So this is a huge bargain compared to that car, and it drives lovely. But for 60 grand, or let's say for the sake of discussion, you're really gonna put some options in your C8, let's say 70 grand. You and I both know that the person that, that's got 55 grand, 60 grand in the bank, or someone who's gonna finance it, you know how I feel about financing, if you have 60 grand in the bank, you're either gonna stretch a little bit and you're gonna buy the car that is the moonshot, or you're gonna wait a little bit, save up some more money, and still buy the car that's the moonshot. I don't know who's gonna buy this at this point. In May, April, and June, I was all for it, but my worldview has changed once I saw that C8. And I didn't just see it, I actually had the opportunity to get early access. Uh, you know, I'm friends with many designers, and let's just say one of the designers who worked on it, got early access to his car, and it's the tactile feel is good, even that console, it's not great, but the, the buttons that you use on a regular basis in that car, they are, there's tactile feel. It's like a toggle switch instead of just like a flat button like these. That's my problem with this thing. Like, this is a good car. There's, there's really nothing wrong with this, and Toyota should be commended for having the balls to say, you know what, we can't afford a program like this, but we need to have a program like this. How do we go and do it? And they went and found BMW, who probably was on the other side of the equation, and said, you know what, we don't want to continue with the Z4 because it's just not selling that well. And, and, and right now, BMW, if I'm honest, they're, they're a little bit lost right now. Like, they're kind of trying to do everything. They're putting bets in different places. So I could have not gotten angry at them if they took their bet off of a Z4 and put it somewhere else, where these guys came to the party and said, here, we're gonna give you half the budget and I want you to make the car better. And overall, all three cars, meaning this car, the six cylinder version of the Z4 and the four cylinder, they are so much better than the Z4 that came before. And also, no, I'm not just a super guy. I actually owned not one, but two Z Roadsters from BMW. I had a, a serial production one and I had an M. So these are these cars speak to me. I spent my own money on these cars. And that's why, I think that's why I'm so incensed about this right now, because these are so personal to me. So, you know what? Here's a question I'm gonna pose to you. It's not really a world car thing. Would you still buy this in a world where the C8 exists? That's question number one. Question number two, are you as moved by the moonshot of the C8? And does it have this much of an impact that I think on this, and I would argue, the C8 has an impact on the Cayman as well? Comments below.